Here is my 1999 Speed Triple. Well, it is. It's actually a Daytona that's been Speed Tripled. I believe they're called Speed Toners. For people that know. Bought it as a track bike. I think last time it was out. There you go. Donington Park 2022, June. And um, needs a bit of love now. So I've taken the... Um, Taken the it had some uh, crash bungs on that I took off, and also had a bit of a fuel leak, so I took the tank off. But when I took the tank off, I think I may have broken the IVAC valves, which they do break on bikes, well, Daytonas of this age, because you know, 23 years old now, 24 years old, so the rubber's perished. So I've got some um, 6 mil hose and um, get the tank off and get it all connected I did actually look for a video on, on YouTube to see how this was done and um, there wasn't one so I thought I'll do one for for you guys if you need to swap yours it's not a particularly difficult job apparently I've never done it before so let's crack on with it obviously first thing Get the seat off, oh, the passenger seat as well, passenger seat first, or seat cows I've got, and the seat. Then undo these three bolts, and undo the bolts, side bolts, and the bolts for the, for the um, tank. Take the tail off, take that off, front sort of tank cowl, take the tank off. Now these front cowls, can be a right pain to put back on again because the plastic like the tank plastic as well and over years they tend to have warped and expanded so so you just got to watch that could be a bit of a pain to get back on so all the bodywork's off tanks are off I'm assuming you guys know how to do that uh, one of the things I've got on here is there a pipe across filter instead of the standard filter? It's got a um, rashy rear sets on, quite nice, multi adjustable backwards and forwards, up and down. It's got quick shifter on, it's got wire shock in there, got road, uh, sorry, race gearing as well. Um, I think that's about it. Yeah, I think that's about it. So the next thing is to get the airbox off and the little sort of um, stepper motor thing, I think this is down at the bottom of here, it's got a little seal around it as well so when you put it back together again you need to put that seal back in place and uh, we're looking for some pipes that go from the that stepper motor thing to the um, the fuel intake. So uh, one of the, we also need to take that off, take that mount off, then I think the whole thing just sort of pops off once I've done all that. So I'm going to crack off with that and catch up with you in a little bit. So now the airbox is off, uh, I had to unplug that, that plug there to get it off this sort of moves out the way you see my um, quick shifter wire um, those are the hoses that you need to change um, but these ones look pretty good actually these have been changed before now I'm going to change this one because it's a bit short with a bit of a kink there but the problem I've got it looks like is the seals disappeared there's no seal there there should be a seal the same sort of shape around there when it fits into into the airbox so I'm gonna to have to order a new seal but the way you do this is you just replace that one that one that one it's actually going to the throttle bodies obviously and um, make sure they're not kinked and then just basically make sure you don't lose that seal. Put the airbox all back on. 
wire it all up and then your jobs are good one. but I'm gonna to have to log on to Fowler's and order a part so I can get mine running again well, I hope this video has been useful for you fortunately it hasn't ended quite the way I wanted it to but still at least now you can see if you want to if you've got um, a high idle I think they say sort of uh, between two and three thousand revs usually the problem is that these these little pipes have got old and gone hard and then snapped and then they let air in and that causes the uh, the idle to rise obviously once you've um, once you're connecting the airbox back up don't forget your breather hoses that one there one there and there's a couple that go down the side don't forget that one. Oh, there's a couple that are on the actual tank as well you need to worry about but yeah um hopefully this video has been useful for you if you're doing this kind of thing i've also got other videos as well i've got um bsa flat tracker and building there's the engines over there that i'm building uh, we've got rd thrifty lc that also uh, needs a little bit of love uh, i've got some parts arrived at the post today so i'll be knocking up a video on that just uh, changing the the oil seal the gearbox oil seal because what's happened is the gearbox oil has escaped into the into the water and made some nice strawberry milkshake so it's going to be a, a water uh, pump bearing change and the seal and the gaskets on that fill it up with new gearbox oil and then that'll be back on the road so watch out for some more videos like subscribe Click on the bell if you want to get notified when I put something else out. I usually try and put something else out at least once a week. <coughs> so that we do yet another tidy up of the workshop. And I'll catch you on the next one. Thanks all. So it's another new it's another new day. And um, ordered yesterday from Fowler's arrived the next day. So um Stick that seal on the stepper motor and crack on. So the seal has a flat side and a grooved side. And the grooved side sits up against that bit of uh, plastic that goes around the stepper motor. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to put some grease on this as well to give a nice sort of tight sticky fit. And then um, stick the airbox back on. So with the seal on, it looks like that. Just need to push the um, the airbox on and make sure the breather pipes are all connected up. So you really just need to line up the um, intakes, and then this bracket. Just foul a little bit, so you just need to push that forwards, and then once you have it all aligned, it just sort of all push. You just push down; it all clips together. And good thing on these is there is a breather pipe down there. And on previous bikes, our breather pipes can be a right pain, especially on SVs. But that lines up perfectly. As soon as you push it down, it sort of um, pushes against that breather pipe, and it goes in. So all we need to do now is screw that back in again, plug that plug in, just this one there. Oh. So, um, you just got to make sure they've got to line the airbox up against the three throttle bodies. This little bracket here, that can foul it, so you can make sure you push it forward. Make sure the breather pipe down there lines up properly. Once you've got it all lined up, it's just a case of pushing it down and the airbox just clips onto the intakes. Good thing about this one is, in bikes I've had in the past, the breather tubes can be a, be a right faff. But the way that this one pushes down, it lines up really good. And the pressure of pushing it down on the intakes also pushes on the, on the breather tube and it pushes it in. So all we need to do now is screw this back on, 
plug the plug in and those two screws down there and then the airbox is back on again so that's all that back together a couple more room repairs I've got to do on this got um, the fuel low level indicator wire has broken so I need to sort that out I've got a, um, a leak out of the the fuel pump plate so I've got a gasket for that today I need to do that and also I had a set of uh, crash bungs on which I've taken off and I've just received the parts for that today as well I've actually put the nuts sort of on there but they need flipping over so just put them on there so I know where they are so I'm going to crack on with that I hope you enjoy the video like subscribe all that kind of thing and I'll see you on the next one